Ant Room Tour 2023. So where do we begin? Dark Rover Ants. To put it simply, these ants are extremely tiny. These teensy eensy ants are so small, you can barely see them in this container. This ant species was one of the very first types of ants I have ever kept, but also one of the ants that I never really had a large colony of. And coming from an ant YouTuber, that's a failure. Well, I mean, I've always had a problem with keeping a large colony of ants, but you get what I mean. Like the rest of the queen ants in this video, I caught them on a regular summer night at the park, just staring at the ground until something catches my eye, and once something does, I get on the floor, ignoring anyone else passing by, putting every inch of focus into catching this bug and throwing it in a test tube. Oh yes, the life of an ant keeper. Afterwards, they go through the first month of their life in a glass test tube, laying eggs, drinking honey, eating other bugs, and being moved into larger and larger setups. Or they skip that route entirely and are moved into a naturalistic setup, instead where they build a founding chamber and live in there for the first few months. That is exactly what I do with every single colony I have, since I find it easier for me to feed them that way. Also, who doesn't like seeing them build this? But anyways, this setup that I forgot the name of is composed of beach sand and moss. On the edges near the lid is this nasty looking mold, I don't even want to know what this is, that's stuck to the olive oil barrier I put to keep them from escaping. And if you keep ants, you have to keep them from escaping. Yeah, sometimes different kinds of molds just pop out and yeah, it's pretty disgusting. Inside they have this huge liquid feeder that's full of water. And oh, whoops, looks like one escaped while I opened the lid. Whenever this happens, I just grab a q-tip and scoop them back up. Easy peasy mac and cheesy. Another Brachy's back home safely. But for the past year, I haven't been able to spot the queens or eggs, so I don't even know how large the colony is. Before, I would say there's about maybe 15 or 20, but now seeing them, I only counted five. So maybe there's even less. Maybe the queens are gone. Maybe this colony is about to fail. But the same doesn't go for my other colony. With three queens and around 10 workers, they're off to a pretty standard start actually. At the top of their formicarium, they have a liquid feeder filled with honey and a test tube full of water. And one thing they started to do was bring sand from the top back down to where they were nesting to help the larvae spin cocoons. Pretty nice. It kind of reminds me of how my other colony is doing. Unlike this three queen colony that is in a formicarium, this single queen colony was put into a naturalistic setup. She has about 10 workers and they look pretty comfortable in here. It's a bit hard to see them because of the corner, but at least I'm able to get a slight view of their nest. Regardless of their numbers, keeping these ants can be a real treat once you get them to a big enough colony. Well, at least I would imagine since I don't have a large colony of these ants yet. But hopefully, all of that will change this year. Seriously, I, I've been keeping these ants for so long, but you know, I have a good feeling about this year. Wish me luck, everyone. Please wish me luck. If you haven't already, join the Discord. I'm getting a little bit more active over there, I update video progress on future videos, and you can talk with other fellow ant keepers. Hooray! Huzzah! But yeah, I'll see you there. But it's about time I switch things up a bit and I introduce you to my largest colony and largest ants that I keep. These yellow carpenter ants are my favorite and oldest colony I have cared for. And now that I think about it, these would have been my oldest colony that I have ever kept, as this will be my third year keeping them. Wow, can you believe that? I actually managed to keep a colony for more than a year. And since these ants take one to two months to fully develop from egg to worker, they have finally reached the point where they're starting to fill up their once empty nest. I would say there's about 100 workers with a stable diet of honey, moths, and sometimes crickets. Also a side note, this is pretty cool but the honey I gave them had to be melted because it got super frozen because of the winter and um, yeah this is how it turned out and it just looks pretty cool. But back to these ants, even though their numbers are pretty high, my second one isn't doing as well. This queen has only two workers and a few eggs. 
They used to be in a smaller container, but I had to move them because they started nesting at the top of the lid, and it was a whole mess, so I had to just move them out of there. Currently, the colony is setting up shop in this corner, and I might give them another test tube so they can go back to living in a test tube setup, but either way, it will take a while for them to get back on their feet. Or legs. Tarsi? I don't even know. For now, they'll be good with a test tube full of water and this rock keeping them company. I really just hope they will reach the size of my other colony. That would be a major comeback, even if it does take them a few years. But if I give them enough food and a heating mat, maybe I can speed up the process. And since summer is coming up and I will be blacklighting more often, my ants will be feasting almost every night. Let's take a look at the main chamber. Jeez, that is a lot of ants. Feel like I should be using a heating mat on this colony now, now that it's getting warm again. Let me know in the comments if you guys have had a lot of success using heat for your colonies, and if you have any tips. But with this colony out of the way, now we can get to one of my favorite ant species to show on here. Acrobat ants. 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 I caught a few this summer, half of them put into natural setups, and the other half put into test tubes. However, I think it's best to keep these ants in a test tube setup because they don't do too well in containers. The ones in test tube setups have workers already, and I plan to move them into a natural setup later on, just like how I did with my first colonies. Here's one of the two colonies with workers that I have in a natural setup, originally in a test tube setup that they finally outgrew. This small colony has around 10 workers and a growing pile of eggs. The setup is pretty standard, just sand and a single flat rock in the center. The second setup uses the same substrate, but has these crystals as decoration. I don't even know where I got this rock. I think I either won it or bought it for a dollar at a dollar store. It was one of those break it open to see kind of things. But anyways, I wasn't even planning on using this in my ant setups, but you know what? I decided to use it anyway. I just gave this colony some moths to feed on and it looks like they enjoy it. I remember I used to dump these test tubes full of frozen moths into my old setup and they would go crazy for it. Good times. I was hoping the colony would nest in this small hole in the ground, but they didn't. I found they do much better in tubs and tube setups instead of a queen founding in a natural setup. But if anyone has had any other luck besides using test tubes, let me know. For now, I think the colony will do well here. However, I have had a little success with another queen who starred out in one of these setups. Here she is with her first batch of eggs. Looks pretty lonely all by herself in this container. Don't worry, Queen Ant, you'll have your first worker soon. Whenever I check on her, she's always walking around, but I think right here in this corner is where she's going to stay. But yeah, not much to say about this one, just patience, darkness, and time. But okay, moving along, back to the small ants, here we have, oh wait, take a look at that. It looks like we've stumbled across a queen ant creating her first founding chamber. After this queen ant finishes creating her founding chamber, she will take off her wings and lay eggs. But sometimes, queen ants can keep their wings, even after they have a large colony. Now looking at these queen ants just dig these holes in the ground, it's just really fascinating and like cool to watch. It's like watching paint dry or grass grow. It's Actually, that's kind of a bad example, but it's a slow process, but after it's finished, it's really neat to see. So over the course of a day or two, she will continue digging this chamber. So let's check back on her tomorrow. And okay, here we are in tomorrow. I guess she didn't like that spot she was at earlier, and chose to dig next to one of the sides. Now we'll get a much clearer view of how much she's progressed. It looks like the founding chamber is finished, and now she's starting to cover up the entrance. You go, Queen Ant. You go. I'm excited to catch this type of ant species again, since my first colony died off. But the setups I'll make for those queens will have dirt instead of sand. It's hard to see the workers when the sand is almost the same color as them. The only time I can easily see them is when I feed them honey on a tray, or if I move them into a handmade nest then I would be able to see them at a much better view. But how about we check on some ants that are really known for their digging, with seeds covering up their enclosure, 
These harvester ants are having a feast today. Let's take a look at the colony beneath. Here we can see all the larvae and some newly hatched workers too. When the workers are born, they are bright yellow. The rest of the nest is fully carved out and somewhat organized. And I just showed you where the workers were tending to the larvae, but over here is where they store most of the seeds I give them. Somewhere around here the queen is also hanging out, but I wasn't able to spot her. I'm just glad they have this little spot in the corner where I can see a few of the larvae up close. And overall, these ants are one of my favorites, mainly because I've always wanted to have harvester ants, and now I finally have them, and it's just, they're just really cool to see. But also kind of scary if they escape because I've heard they have really painful stings, and I don't want to get stung. The good thing about these ants is that they can't climb smooth surfaces, so I can have them much closer to the lid than other colonies. But since the workers moved the sand so much and made these small hills, the entire top layer of sand was actually heightened by an inch. Definitely we'll have to move them to another setup when the time is right. The great thing about feeding this colony is I can give them seeds and not have to worry about giving them live bugs from my backyard. The workers will mash up these seeds and feed them to the larvae. Wish I had more colonies and hopefully, like I said earlier, that will all change this year. And you know, now that I'm making a video on this, I can't believe I've actually had this many ants. Well, at least for me, it's a lot. And if you're hoping to catch queen ants, now is the perfect time, future fellow ant keeper. Or fellow ant keeper. Because over here in the United States, queen ant nuptial flights have just started. Best of luck to you all, and I hope you catch some queen ants. And if you have any ant colony updates or anything that you're looking forward to this ant keeping season, let me know in the comments, and I will reply. And, um, yeah, it's good to be back. It's been a while since I said this. Man, did I really forget how my saying went? <laughs> my name is Ender Ants, another fellow ant YouTuber, and I'll see you soon, friends.